fire predictions. Arashi, first, who do you think has a better draft? Ooh, I like Burn X Flashes just because of the flexibility. And I'd like to I have to stay away from danger. So having a lot more range, I like that a lot. So I think I'll go with Burn X Flash on this one. I like danger, Incendio. All right. I like the. That, that's a I think I'm leaning over response. to you too, man. I really like aggression and looking at Incendio. That's what they're bringing to the table. Ladies and gentlemen, it's time to dive in for match number two Burn X Flash up against Incendio Supremacy. Looking at this game, if the aggression works, yeah, where, where, where should it work at? Because right now, looking at both teams, if they get. In, wait, wait, wait. I, I saw the Grok with a Marksman Emblem, so it's going to be a lot of physical attack. And I guess this is a, a Glue Rover. Is, is this what's going on? Oh, so it is it a Glue Rover. What wait. is going on here? It I think a, it is a Glue Rover. I mean, you called it out. It's not. It is a. Yeah, yeah, you're right. The right? Glue Rover, and it's going to be the Grok in the XP. We saw that Boots brought the high and dry in game number one. But for. Oh, wait a minute. Apex is going to be caught here. Forced Ooh. to use the flicker. D7's already looking for the kill on the Estes, flanking around. But yeah, th we've seen this before. It was Fluffy who used this build in Indonesia on the Grok XP. Weapon mastery, which means he's looking for that late game damage, technically. Or the mid game damage, whenever he gets those items. He's looking to scale with the items as best possible. And yeah, the roaming glue, we, we saw, we talked about that roam going in. And he was trying to escort the Clint, trying to make sure that the Clint has a good lane. But as you mentioned, Mirko, the Farsa just comes in, becomes a big problem. And now Burn already uh, trying to abuse the mobility and the speed of this Benedetta pick. Oh, very good eye for an eye there. Getting out of the endless shards. And Chama will just go for the gold buff, picks it up. And in the early stage, it's still just both teams playing it really slow. No real reason to go in for a crazy engagement. Oof. Right as I say that, though, Caster Curse, Chama jumps in. Oh, oh. <laughs> and Tenzi too gets the first blood in the mid lane up against Seacat. Caster Curse is real, man. Every time we, see, we predict something, the exact opposite happens. And now with that pressure, they're going to go for that turtle Ooh. fight. They have sustain. They have burst damage as well. So in the early game, this makes for a very dangerous combination. Yeah, mid game, I mean, it's just what I want to see from Burn X Flash actually because they have the S's and they have a range advantage. So I want to see them pick one lane, win that out. Apex 47 is doing a lot of damage, but he's taking a lot of damage himself. He has to remember, as a roamer, you don't scale up quickly. So he's got to be careful when he goes for disengages. Well, Incendio Supremacy are already doing a good job at splitting Burn up. It's still going to be ATM in the back line with the fa final blow here. Trying to look for the steal as TNT will still be able to get that retribution oh. down. ATM dashing all across the place, picking up a kill onto Rosa as that's Apex 47, an alien caught by Burn X Flash. And it is a double kill picked up. Now, D7 gets a kill too. That is three kills being picked up by the side of Burn X Flash. And that was a very bold play from Seacat. He just goes in with the wings by wings all the way by point blank to the members of Incendio, knowing that they were on the back foot enabling him to just land so much crowd control, so much more burst damage. And in the early game, this is what they can abuse. If Incendio wants to try and match them, it will be in that mid game where the cult altar can be abused in the midst of those chaotic fights. Well, Incendio, they're kind of like high risk, high reward kind of kind of strat right now because a lot of bursts, but because Burning Splash, they do have the S's. It can mitigate a lot of damage. So looking at how it's setting up right now, looking at the emblems, even this S is putting oh. a lot of stats onto healing, and that was a good burst. Can they do it over and over again? That's the big question, right? Can they do it when an Estes is around? Hmm, that's the problem. Although they do have the chance of like crowd controlling the Estes to mitigate that healing, but already rotations are being made. Incendio are trying to make sure that they exert their own will, but Look at the response, just quick coming in from Burn X Flash. Very good rotations here by Burn X Flash already. Again, helping the gold laner Fury, who's not in a good matchup up against the Clint. But now it does seem like with both teams rotating towards that top side, both teams will disengage. But Incendio will actually still try to look for a commitment here with the endless wow. shards being placed on the Fury. But with D7 there, that answers your question. The burst is not enough just yet. Now it's going to be the Cult Ultra placed in again. Chama going to be caught, but has the healing coming in from D7 as Apex 47 jumps in with the split split, brings Chama back onto Incendio. And it's a one for one. The Roamer traded in for the jungler. Oof. Still worth it for Incendio as the turtle spawns in to the land of dawn. There was one more weak point on Sunshine, so Fury almost used that crossbow of Tang, but that is what 
Burn X Flash can afford to do right here. Despite everyone rotating to cut off Fury from his team, the support comes in, the healing comes in, and if Incendio clumps together, you can see that the Feather Airstrike is devastating. Right now, Burn X Flash, they're looking pretty good, pretty solid, even though Incendio has a small goal lead, but looking at this, Apex 47 wants to get a cash, but it's easier said than done. Feather Airstrike by Seacat just to buy some time, poking him down. Alien gonna be able to actually use the Furious Dive. Wait, it's a kill over. ATM was able to find Tianzi in his own jungle, invading out of nowhere with the Petrify, gets that kill down, and instantly Incendio have lost turtle control. Unless Apex can make a miracle happen, doesn't look like it's gonna happen though. It's such a tough situation for Incendio right now because Burn X Flash, they have the superior poke damage and they also have the superior sustain. So unless Incendio can get a very decisive engage onto the members of Burn X Flash, it's going to be very difficult for them to even get anything. And even if they engage, they need to make sure that it is on D7 because as you mentioned, Lafell and Mirko, that healing is just way too much for them to deal with in this early game without any items. Right now, I just want to talk about Burn X Flash because I'm your ATM right now. He's banking it on because TNC Ooh. can't Ooh. do anything to this guy. This Benedetta is causing a lot of problems, not just with damage, not just with, with, with the, the, the control in confusion, but actually being a target of getting bursted down and taking absolutely no damage, that's got to be demoralizing for Incendio right now. That is what happens when your composition has a very short window of damage. If you compare that to Burn X Flash, the longer the fight goes, the more they have an advantage. We saw it earlier in the turtle fight, and I think Incendio understand it as well. They want to get in, get their benefits, you know, get the pickoff, and get out before the fight gets out of control. Good opening by Chuma over to Alien, dealing some damage out as Fury is actually looking oh. for all the weakness points, gets it while Charge Forced in. The Crossbow Tang with the Inspire is going to be popped in, but Alien still able to actually take all that damage. And the Charge pop, but that's D7 with the healing. Apex 47 bringing him back right now with the Call Alter placed as well. Fury's going to be taken down as the Feather Airstrike will be popped towards the back line. TNZ taken low, and the Brazer's Wrath by Chuma seals TNZ's fate. Apex caught, has the split split, goes back in, flickering onto Seacat. Getting the stacks down, getting in as well, bringing them back. Oh. Alien now, following it up with wow. the damage, and you wow. can see the weapon mastery finally coming into play. As the taunt comes in, Chmaz looking for the setup once again. Alien flickers out, gets knocked up, as that's another split split by oh. Apex 47. I'm your ATM, jumping in with the Petrify, Rosa flickering out. Rosa gonna be taken down with the final blow, was cancelled out, and it's a shutdown for Sunshine. Now, guess who's back? Fury's back from the dead, but it's not enough, and it is both teams just disengaging. Wow, they spent, they spent so much time trying to get into that fight that Incendio, they were able to wither most of the storm and then later on, finally use that cult altar effectively. That is not what Burn X Flash were looking for. Let me just put into perspective how long that team fight was. <laughs> yeah. uh, Glue used the split split his ultimate three times and, <laughs> and Grog used the wild charge two times. <laughs> Both ultimates. Imagine five ultimates from just these two. Um, that's a long team fight. That's a very long team fight. I almost ran out of breath. Oh bro. yeah. Hey, hey, you know, good job. Hey, thank you. Man. Yeah, congrats. Yeah, you, you breathe, man. That's crazy. I breathe. <laughs> you breathe good. But now the, it's Incendio that's on the back foot. They went for the turtle, but is that enough? Because Burn moves wow. for the pressure, and now he alien is the one being targeted by Fury and D7. Okay, that damage is pretty disgusting, right? You saw it. One attack with the power of nature. Hmm. Okay, so here's the thing about, about burst compositions, right? You, you always got to make sure that kind of everyone, or at least two members, are focusing on the same target. And I kind of feel like that's, that's what's making Incendio's draft look not so great right now. Because everyone is targeting their own thing. Like, whoever's closest, let's go for the target now. TNZ and Rosa, they're waiting around the orange Ooh. buff. Can they actually catch it? Yeah, that's your answer right there. Seacat's going to be caught. Rosa pops the call altar again. Just trying to get out of there with Sunshine backing up him up. It does seem like Incendio will take control of the bottom lane. With Apex 47 acting as a roamer, but because he's so sustainable, he can actually act as an XP laner too, just be a distraction. I'm your ATM. Try to go for the Petrify, jumps out with the eye for an eye, but gets gunned down by Sunshine. And that's the mid lane pressure being placed on by Incendio. And they get that top lane too. It's so good by Incendio right now. They're winning in the structure department. They took the mid tower and you're moving towards the top tower as well. So with uh -oh. the control, they can look to face like this. And ooh, that was a very, again, dangerous attempt from Alien. And we saw this is what they do. They hide in the jungle. They cut you off from your team. And before you know it, you lost two members before the fight even begins. 
Yeah, right now, Apex 47, I'm seeing that he's just more or less being a distraction. Of course, he would try to get someone. TNZ just caught Z-Cat. And right now, it looks like, I don't know which items that really made the difference, but Incendio, all of a sudden, is like, yeah, 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 let's, let's fight, let's fight. Like, let's, let's just go for it. We can get the kills now, guys. Let's go. Incendio have something against Seacat, man. He's been taken down five times, and TNZ has always just been on that. Apex 47, again, just opening up the map again, acting as Whoa. a distraction. He goes in for split split, but will be taken down by the crossbow tank. It's translated over to Rosa with the help of that final blow, dealing so much damage while Charge connects onto two, but Sunshine's free hitting. The seven still helping the team sustain with Appraiser's Wrath being placed by Tama to pick up a double kill. It's a three for one, and Burn have turned around a fight 4v5 without Seacat. That is insane. They're just going in so aggressively, and they get clumped up. Seacat wasn't there initially in the fight, but he actually made it there, and that is something you cannot do against his composition. We talked about diving in towards crowd control, and Burn X Flash has an abundance of CC that they can use to stop Incendio in their tracks. Oh, Chuma, again, taking some damage, but he is a Fredrin. Yeah, right now, looking at the composition, right, I kind of feel like Sunshine is, is already on board. Like, I want to fight with you guys, so... Burnix Flash, they gotta start focusing on actually getting Sunshine down first before they start fight because in this team fight right now, what's happening, Arashi? Initially, it was a cult altar, but again, everyone's clumped up so deep into each other. And they, their member that's been shining so far is Tien Z. It's an assassin that we can, we can delete one person, but he cannot delete the whole team. So we saw that Tien Z was able to do a lot of damage, but everyone else are still able to survive and do the damage. And eventually, Incendio just run out of steam. Right now, Burning Splash, they're pushing in, and if... I, I'm, I'm looking at Minlin, I don't know who's going to win this 1v1, yeah. but it looks like Nader is going to win the 1v1 Oof. because now TNZ is getting pressured because everyone from Burning Splash is moving towards mid. And I like this way of play. Focus on actually, you know, moving together, actually using this SS to your advantage. You just saw D7 and Fury build that Athena shield at the same time. They understand that right now, Incendio, they need to play around TNZ. If their main damage dealers or their main support can get deleted, that is a huge blow to their teamfight capabilities. And they recognize that. So with the, with the Athena shield, it means that Incendio's TNZ will be having a lot more of a difficult time trying to delete all those backline members. Yeah, right now, I honestly think at the 12 minute mark, it's time to transition, right? Your main carry was TNZ, but now it's about time to transition over to Sunshine, who has the damage, who has the weapon mastery as well. Apex, though, still able to actually get out of that with the split split as Rosa tries his best to zone the members away. Both teams not really gonna risk anything, not really gonna commit to anything here in 12 minutes, still waiting for that Lord to spawn back in. Right now, I'm actually just looking at TNZ because he is trying very hard to make sure that he is staying at the side of Burn X Flash jungle. And looking at the way that they're playing, I kind of feel like he wants to take out Seacat or, or Fury as fast as possible. And right now, Alien, he's alone. Can he actually get out of this? And it looks like Burn X Flash, they're not even sure where oh. he is. They don't know Alien is there. Oh, Alien. Oh, there you go. He's spotted here. He jumps in, looking for the power of nature, but will just use the wild charge to get out. Weakness point, the final one, not there just yet, but it is opened up. Alien isolated from the rest of the team. Fury has the crossbow tank, but will not use it, and that might be a mistake, as that's an endless charge placed onto him. Schwan's gonna be isolated, and he's gonna be taken down. The crossbow tank is dealing damage to himself with Apex on him with the split split, and Fury now with no ultimate. It's gonna be ATM jumping with the five, fighting the jungler, shutting him down. Apex running for the hills, the feather is comes down to poke them down. Fury of the kill spray, chasing them down. Looking for more weakness points on the board, but Sunshine comes in. Oh. Gets the shutdown back. ATM loses his immortality. Rosa is all alone. And it's Burn who come out on top. That was a long fight, a long chase. And Incendio went for the flank, but they kind of, they kind of didn't really get the best re-engage onto that fight. And that allows Burn X Flash to buy a bit more time and eventually as we said, the Long Jonah team fights with the sustain, with the DPS, they come out on top and it's so disastrous because the Lord is up at the same time. Incendio is still contesting, but it does not seem possible unless Alien can make some of, something of a miracle play. We've seen a miracle play by a Grok many times before. He's looking for it. He has the weapon mastery for a reason. Oh! He steals it for Turkey, for Incendio to save the game for his team. He's an absolute alien for that one. I mean, you called it, man. We've seen so many 
Miracle Place <laughs> with the Grok. If you want to see I it happen, tell. like you do, this is why you know, like Grok's one of my favorite heroes. But okay, that was an insane <laughs> play. But Incendio, they gotta be on the same. I don't know, man. Do I even really want to be too smart about this? Because that's a highlight of the day. That's a highlight of the day, man. Wow, unbelievable. I I didn't think it was possible. I'll be real with you, but he proved me wrong, man. Alien. Saves that Lord play, and now with the Lord behind them, they have a chance to split up the members of Burn Ice Flash, and that will actually be very beneficial for their composition. They can get those pickoffs that's been very difficult to get when Burn Ice Flash is clumped up working as a team together. The comp works so well for Sieges with the Clint. And with the Feather Airstrike being used up in the bottom lane, it leaves the mid lane susceptible to this kind of siege. You can already see it with the Lord taking the base turret down. It is going to be Incendio backing off instantly, still playing that discipline game, not wanting to commit any further. Yeah, I kind of feel like if they want to go inside the base, it's going to be very difficult. Oh. <laughs> Hello, I'm your ATM. Well, come on home. Stay in the base. And that's what you got to do because if they want to go inside the base of Burning Splash, it's going to be very difficult for them to engage. So they got to find a way to split Burnex Flash up and then actually try to engage. Exactly, when they're split up like that, that's where you can see Tianzi just really take over. It is I'm your ATM who was able to get a solo kill, but in this late stage of the game against, you know, full damage aim on, it's gonna be too difficult, but the engage comes in. Alien again with wild charge onto three and the power of nature just seals Seacat's fate. The Appraiser's Wrath did not find him, but Fury's gonna be massive right now with a crossbow tank. A winner truncheon to bait it out and to get out. TNZ gonna be caught low as Apex 47 jumps in, but Fury, Fury is still kind of away! Whoa! Sunshine guns him down! And that's two on the board for Incendio, plus the base turret. Oof. That, okay, 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 okay. So, 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 pulling back into the game right now, 2,000 go lead. Incendio, they got amazing damage. And right now, Burning Splash, I kind of feel like they gotta find a way. I love this game. I love this game as well. You know, like this game is fire. You I'm fire. It. You're fire. I you called, called it. it Arashi. And right now, Incendio, they have a lot of burst damage and burning splash. They're trying to burn things down bit by bit. And look, what? Okay, talk, talk to me, Arashi. What does Incendio got to do? What does Burn X Flash got to do to actually close this game? All right, for Burn X Flash, I think they have to try and get their sights onto Sunshine. Yes, TNZ is a problem, but they have items, they have ways to deal with that. Winter Truncheons, Magical Defense, Athena Shields, they have built that already. But Sunshine has been free hitting, he has one death right now, that is not okay. For Burn X Flash, the main damage dealer needs to be taken out. Unless they want to lose in the whole front to back, because Fury on the 1-1 one -one cannot just do the same kind of damage in a team fight like Sunshine on this Clint. And for Incendio on the flip side, they can do what they've been doing right here, split up the team, ensure that the Estes cannot get full value from the Blessing of the Moon Goddess, and beware of the Feather Airstrike poke damage. If it's down, if they can force Seacat to use it, they must do so. Oh, that was such a good eye for an eye to oh, get out nice. of Endless Shards, but the basic attack is all TNZ needs. ATM. Buys the Winter Truncheon, but it's not enough. It is not enough. One man disadvantage, right, with the Lord spawning in. And what is Incendio gonna do? They started up instantly. I thought they were gonna wait for the Evolved Lord, but no, they're going at it. They can't waste any time. Yeah, I, I kind of feel like running splash. They gotta see this coming, man, because whenever someone wants to split up, it really doesn't matter who you find, you're definitely wow. going to die. So really, move as a team, try to put pressure, because right now, Incendio, They've, they've reached their mark. They've reached their win condition. Burning Splash, look at the game. Slow down, move together, stop getting picked off because he, Tianzi right now, he is loving this hero. He's loving oh, yeah. seeing anyone moving alone. And it's crazy that he's so aggressive. He sees I'm your ATM alone and he goes for it on the opposite side of the Lord. It's smart, it just catches I'm your ATM out of, uh, you know, off guard completely, and now with the Lord, this is going to be the final sequence. They will be trying to look for it, unless Burn can find oh, something great. Oh, Alien, what a play right there, but when nature comes in, it does not matter. Tianzi is targeting the base. the base to secure the upper brackets for Incendio Supremacy. Be proud, you have done it, Incendio. Dude, beating Ape Falcon, Apex, and now Burn. Apex 47, he did the heart. He's happy, but I can see his hand shaking. He's like, we we won. It was close. We won, but Easy. dude, dude.
You can see the pressure getting to them, man. It's such a great moment. It was so close, and it wasn't one-sided at all. There were so many moments where it was almost over, but again and again, this crazy...